All right, we are doing lesson 29, mod 5, and we're going to be estimating sums, which means addition, and differences, which means subtraction, using our benchmark numbers. You may ask, why are we working with estimation? Well, estimation helps us to get an idea of what our answer may be, so that when we actually solve it, if we're close, then we know we're probably right. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to think about what does estimating mean? Well, if you said that estimating means not finding the exact answer, then you're probably right. Because, well, you are right, not probably right. You are right. Because estimating is not the actual answer. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down these fractions on your paper. Pause while you do that, please. So in order to do this, we are asking ourselves three-fifths. Let's go ahead and estimate this one first. We're going to go ahead and round it so that we have to determine what it's closer to. So we can either round to the nearest whole below, the nearest whole after, or the halfway point. So if you were to make a number line and you put the whole before three and one-fifths, what would that whole be? Well, it would be three. What's the whole after three and one-fifths? Well, that'd be four. And if you haven't drawn this yet, you need to draw it. And what's my middle point? Three and a half. So you have to ask yourself, where does three and one-fifths fall? Well, is it closer to three, three and a half, or four? Well, if I were to cut this whole thing into fifths, three and one-fifths would probably fall about here. So what is that closer to? Is it before the half or over the half? Well, it's before the half, so we obviously round down. So three and one-fifths is about three. We're going to do the same thing with four and eight-ninths. Go ahead and draw your number line. I know some of you are already going, but Mrs. Barnes, I know the answer. Great. Try your number nine. So here's our question. Four and eight ninths. What is the whole that comes before four and eight ninths? Well, it's four. They gave it to you. They always do. And what's the whole that comes after four and eight ninths? Well, if you said five, you are also correct. And then our midpoint is four and a half. Just like regular rounding, <clears throat> if it's past the halfway point, then you round up. Below the halfway point, you round down. Eventually, you'll get to the point of, well, I can just round to the halfway. And that's okay, too, but we're not there yet. So, four and eight ninths. If I cut this hole into ninths, four and eight ninths might land around here. So, is it past the halfway point or before? Well, it's passed, so that means I'm about five. So that means my, ans my estimate is about eight. That's my estimate. See how easy that is? <clears throat> now, what we could actually do is we could actually figure it out and see if we're correct, but then I would have to change my denominators here. I'm not going to make you do that because that's why we're estimating. So that's for adding. Well, let's imagine we wanted to instead figure out the difference. What is the difference between four and eight ninths and three and one fifth? What if I want to figure out the difference? Well, we found that four and eight ninths is closer to five than four, so that's five. And we found out three and one fifth is closer to three than four, so the difference is two. That's our estimate. It's close. So when you round them, it helps you to make that estimate more clearly. All right, let's do our next one. Let's do 8 and 9 tenths plus 2 and 4 eighths. I want you to figure out what 8 and 9 tenths rounds to, just like we did here. Put it underneath. And same thing with 2 and 4 eighths. If you need your number lines, use them. If you don't, then don't use them, but if you get it wrong, you're going to want to go back and figure out why. All right, pause while you do this. 
All right, this was a tricky one because, well, this one wasn't. Eight and nine tenths. My whole before it is eight. My whole after is nine. Some of you might have said your whole before is seven, but it's not because eight and nine tenths is past eight, so the whole is eight. They always give it to you. Eight and nine tenths, if I cut this whole into tenths, my eight and nine tenths would fall here, which makes it closer to nine. If you got that, you can give yourself a pat in the back. Now the next one, two and four eighths, well the whole before is two, and the whole after is three. And then of course we have our middle, which is two and a half. Now you and I both know that four eighths is equivalent to a half, look at that. So actually, two and four eighths is the same as two and a half. So here's where you have a decision. You could either keep it two and a half, because that's easy to add, or you know anything that's a half or above rounds up. So it would round to three. Nine plus three is 12. If you chose to keep it two and a half, that's very easy to add as well. You add your holes which is 11, and then you add your fraction. So now you ask yourself, which is more accurate? This rounding up to the holes or rounding to the half? I bet you rounding to the half is more accurate because it's getting us closer to our answer since it was actually a half. The next thing we're going to look at is improper fractions. I have 15 fourths versus 22 sevenths. Well, it's pretty hard to figure out and estimate what's what, <clears throat> what's closer to what, without turning them into mixed numbers. So we're going to go ahead and turn them into mixed numbers first. So if we pull this out, how many holes can I get out of 15 fourths? Well, if you need to do what we've done in the past and write them all out, then do it. If you don't need to, then don't. Please figure out the whole and the part that's left for both of these. I'm going to do this one with you. I know that 4 fourths is 1, 8 fourths is 2, 12 fourths is 3, and 16 fourths is 4. I don't have 16 fourths, so I have to go with my 12 fourths, which is 3 holes. 12 take away from 15 is 3. So I have 3 fourths left. Put them together and it equals 3 and 3 fourths. Please do the same thing with 22 sevenths, except for this time use sevenths. Pause while you do it. What you should have looked at is that 7 sevenths was 1, 14 sevenths was 2, 21 sevenths was 3, and 28 sevenths was 4. We only have 22 sevenths, so we pulled out a 3, and the leftover was 1 seventh because I took out 3 holes, which was 21 versus 22. It's only one leftover. So now, if we were comparing them, we know which one's bigger. What happens if I want to add them? I have to round. What would 3 and 3 fourths round to? If you need to draw your number line, go ahead. If you don't, then don't. Pause while you figure out what each of those would round to, and then go ahead and add them. Pause. I was actually able to use the same number line for both. Three and three fourths. The whole before it is three. The whole after it is four. And the middle is three and a half. Three and three fourths. Definitely is closer to 4, and 3 and 1 sevenths is definitely closer to 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. I could do the same thing if I were subtracting them. They still round to the same thing. If I wanted to find the difference, I know the difference is 1. If I wanted to be even more precise or even closer, I could take my 3 and 3 fourths and round it to 3 and a half. Because if it's on three and a half, then it's going to be much closer to the actual answer. Three and a half plus three is six and a half. 
or 3 and a half minus 3 is only a difference of a half. The closer you round it to its actual, the better off you're going to be. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we are actually going to figure out this problem right here. 18 and a half plus 17 and a half. We don't really have to do a whole lot of estimating for this one because we can just add 18 and 17, which is 35, and each of our halves is 1. So it would be like saying 36. You're going to be faced with the problem set asking you to write number lines. If you don't need to, do a few, and then you can do the rest without. All right, go ahead, good luck, and find a partner.